allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The audience may be seated. I will now call to order the Redevelopment Agency meeting of May 11, 2016. First order of business is approve the minutes of March 31, 2016. Board Member Rice. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Board Member Rice and a second by Board Member Jacob. Discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Board Member Burton? Yes. Chair Roll? Yes. Board Member Jacob? Aye. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Hagan? Do you want to vote on the minutes? Okay. Board Member Rice? Aye. The vote passes five in favor. The host has the recording feature on. Sorry, this is just, you know. <laughs> Item 2B, discussion and possible action regarding the Regarding resolution number 183, adopting the tentative budget for the City of West Jordan Redevelopment Agency for fiscal year 2016-2017, and set June 8, 2016, as the budget public hearing. Mark, did you have anything to add on that? No. Motion would be in order. Board Member Rice. Move to approve resolution, resolution number 183, adopting the tentative budget, budget for the City of West Jordan Redevelopment Agency for 2016-2017 year. Second. A motion by Board Member Rice and a second by Board Member McConaughey. Discussion of the motion? Let's vote. Board Member Rice? Aye. Board Member Jacob? Aye. Chair Rawl? Yes. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member Hagan? Yes. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Go pass the six in favor. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn the Redevelopment Agency meeting and move to the Municipal Building Authority meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Board Member McConaughey and a second by Board Member Jacob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none. I'll call to order the Municipal Building Authority meeting of May 11, 2016. First item of business, approve the minutes of December 2nd, 2015 as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Board Member McConaughey and a second by Board Member Burton. Discussion? Let's vote. Board Member Hagan? Yes. Board Member Rice? Aye. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Jacob? Aye. Board Member Nichols? Yes. Like yes. Chair Rawl? Yes. Board Member Burton? Yes. Vote passes seven in favor. This is item 2B, discussion and possible action regarding resolution number 87, adopting the tentative budget for the City of West Jordan Municipal Building Authority for fiscal year 2016-2017 and set June 8, 2016 as the budget public hearing. Anything to add, Mark? Board Member McConaughey. Move to approve resolution 87. Second. I have a motion by Board Member McConaughey and a second by Board Member Jacob. Discussion to the motion? Let's vote. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member Hagan? No. Chair Rawl? Yes. Board Member Jacob? Aye. Sorry. Board Member Rice? Aye. Board Member Nichols? Yes. The vote passes seven in favor. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn the Municipal Building Authority meeting and convene the Fairway Estates Special Service Recreation District meeting. So moved. Second. 
There's a motion by Board Member Nichols and a second by Board Member McConaughey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. I will now call to order the Fairway Estate Special Service Recreation District meeting. First item, approve the minutes of December 2nd, 2015 as presented. So moved. I have a motion by Board Member McConaughey and a second by Board Member Haga. Discussion? Ms. Vogel. Chair Roll? Yes. Board Member Haga? Yes. Board Member Rice? Aye. Board Member Nichols? Yes. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member Jacob? Aye. The vote passes seven in favor. Business item 2B, approve resolution 16-71 Adopting the tentative budget for the City of West Jordan Fairway Estate Special Service Recreation District for fiscal year 2016-2017 and set June 8, 2016 as the budget public hearing. So moved. Second. Board Member Burton uh, with a motion and a second by Board Member Haga. Discussion? So. Board Member Jacob? Aye. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member Rice? Aye. Board Member Haga? Yes. Board Member Nichols? Yes. Chair Roth? Yes. So it passes seven in favor. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn the Fairway Estate Special Service Recreation District meeting and convene the City Council meeting of May 11, 2016. So moved. Second. Um, Motion by Board Member McConaughey and a second by Board Member Burton. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. We will now open the City Council meeting and call it to order. And we will move to communications. City Manager? Just one item. <clears throat> the staff and I, uh, senior staff, met and had a uh, lights out exercise. Other communities also were involved in the uh, seeing how we would react and planning for an event that would uh, take out power in the, in the whole county. And that lasted about four hours, so it was a long day, but it was, it was very instructive for everyone that attended. Thanks. Do we have our city attorney online, or is that later? I don't think she's online until <laughs> after the uh, business time. Okay. David Oka. Nothing tonight, Mayor and Council. Thank you. David? Uh, just a quick report on the success of Comcast Cares Day. Uh, Mayor, we had uh, over 700 volunteers uh, on several different projects throughout the city. We had uh, over 40 staff members supervising these projects. In all, we planted 192 trees at Veterans Memorial Park spread 150 yards of mulch in various locations and did some cleanup projects and graffiti removal uh, in different locations in the city. It was a successful event. Thanks. Three Davids in a row. David Sobel? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Wendell? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Chief McAleaf? I'll just add, break the streak, I guess. <coughs> uh, the event that the city manager reported on, I just wanted to recognize Deputy Chief Sharman, who put that, uh, that uh, scenario together today and done a very good job. So thanks to him and everybody that participated. Thanks. Chief Diamond? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Council Member Rice. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to um, also say how much I enjoyed Comcast Care Day. It was a great time. Um, thank you, David, and for all the staff that participated and for the 700 people who showed up to help out. It was, it was a good time. And I, I was just telling David that I learned how to plan a tree the right way. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just looking forward to the uh, Fire Ops 101. I think several of us will be there um, this Saturday, learning to uh, do all the stuff firemen do. Well, well, maybe not learning, but get a little taste anyway. Um, I, I hope to be still around to report on that one in two weeks. <laughs> That's all. Councilmember Nichols? Uh, 
Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to take a mo an opportunity and just share what, uh, with the public what you're in store for in Fire Ops 101. <laughs> I distinctly remember when I did that six years ago, um, that when I went in once, you went in as teams, mm -hmm. and in that time I went into the team, it was a former council member, Ben Southward. Two of us were there, and we're in this bin, it's really dark, and I said, oh, here's the fire, because it's so dark, you can't see this thing. He goes, where is it? And I said, I'm in it, it's all around me. <laughs> so he took the sprayer and sprayed me down. I'll just tell you, it's not at all what you're going to expect. You have so much more of an appreciation of what firefighters do. I mean, you can't see a thing uh, in the conditions upon which they work in. It's so dangerous, and uh, they just do an exceptional job. It's, it's amazing what they're able to do. Anyway, you'll, you'll love the experience. Thank you, Mayor. That's a member Hayden. Thanks, Mayor. Um, you know, I have, I, I have to, real quick story. I, I drove down my neighborhood. I live in a, a subdivision called Shady Lane. And I was driving down, and I come to a T-bone where my street is, and I saw this bright, bright light. And I looked up, and there was an LED, beautiful, neighborhood street acorn street light illuminating my whole uh, front of my house and not this way but this way so this councilman see, sees the LED efforts coming to fruition and my hats off yeah my wife noticed my neighbors noticed thank you very much councilmember Burton thank you mayor my hats off as well I want to add some accolades as well with the Comcast days. For those that helped on Comcast Day and the little group that I had over at Teton States Park. And then one week later, because it was so wet the week before, we didn't have SOTS, we laid SOT at Vista Park a week later. So thank you for all those that helped on those. Also on June 15th at City Hall down in the community room at 7 p.m., I will be holding another town hall meeting. So any of those who are interested and want to have some input, and some uh, information what's going on, please join me June 15th at 7 p.m. in the community room here. I will not be doing the Firefighters 101 this Saturday because this Saturday is the Utah Scouting Expo. So I will be there at the Utah Scouting Expo. Those of you who aren't doing the Firefighting 101, I look forward to seeing you there as well. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember McConnell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one item to uh, share about the Comcast Cares Day. Um, we had some really uh, fantastic staff who went above and beyond. And there were three of them that, uh, I, well, I know there were more than three, but there were three in particular that stuck out to me in the areas that I was at. So I just wanted to uh, call them out and thank them publicly. First one, uh, his name's Norm, and I can't recall his last name, but he works in facilities. He's out over at the rodeo arena. And watching him with like some of the younger kids that were between maybe 10 and 15 years old, the guy was fantastic. Uh, perfect example of just perfect customer service. The way he was trying to take care of the volunteers, make sure that they had everything they need, make sure that they knew how appreciated and welcome their service was. Norm was phenomenal. Uh, the other was Daniel Anderson. He's relatively new to the city. He's with our electrical team. He was helping the folks plant trees right over by the baseball field. And he just made an instant connection with all of the folks that he was with. A um, couple people pointed him out and just kind of gravitated back to him for questions. But again, phenomenal. And number three, um, Ty, who's again, his last name I'm not sure of, but he did a fantastic job. Uh, he's, one of, he's our additional urban forester. So as he was trying to talk to a group of two to 300 people, trying to explain, okay, here's how you plant a tree, uh, keep them all engaged, make sure that they work safely. His enthusiasm for the job was contagious, just absolutely fantastic. And his level, uh, just that level of energy that he brought, the only comparison I could say is it's similar to Dave Naylor uh, when it comes to urban forestry. but. Uh, those were the three that really, really stuck out to me. Again, I know there were a lot more employees who went far above and beyond and got involved and helped, but those were the three I really wanted to call out publicly. That's all I have this week. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I just have a couple things. Uh, first, I forgot to thank Caleb McDougall for leading us in the pledge tonight, and thanks very much for that. 
we appreciate it um, the second item is oh yeah and also I'd like to thank all those that participated the volunteers that participated as well it was a fun day it really was I spent most of my time in the uh, West Jordan Arena but uh, it was a fun day uh, the other thing, just an update on the ZAP funding for 2016. Um, there were $222 million, no, $394,000 requests for the $50 million that was available in ZAP funding. Uh, the thing that means something to West Jordan is the Wellview Regional Park, which is on the border of South Jordan and West Jordan. Uh, the request was for 24 million. We received 12 million. That's what came out of the committee. And we scored number six. The top nine are going to the city council for funding. So it looks like we're gonna at least get half of what we needed. So that'll move that part forward. It was a hotly contested, I've been in a lot of hotly contested meetings in my life, but uh, none more contested than that one. We will now move to the consent, oh excuse me, no we will not. We will move to the citizens' comments. I have three signed up to speak tonight. We'll call them first. Alexander Ephraimov. As a reminder, you'll have three minutes to speak on your topic. Mayor and Council, uh, can we please pause a moment? Ladies and gentlemen, may we pause for a moment to reflect upon our common goals before we begin the business of this meeting. We are privileged to gather here together in a system that gives us freedom to participate in our own governance, whether from within or through the strength provided by our personal face, we seek wisdom understanding, fairness, and resolve in the fulfillment of our duties and in the pursuance of our goals. May our differences be respected and our common aspiration of promoting the public good to be our guide in carrying out the tasks we are about to undertake. Thank you. I'm still waiting for a council member uh, to issue an apology to the mayor and the rest of the council on that council member's behavior April 29th, last year, 2015. I know that council member is a parent. And when parents don't reprimand their children, right or wrong, I think that is an abuse for the children. And that particular council member has children. And I just wonder when they're 21 or 25 and, fee and find out what did mommy do? I would venture to say they would be very, very, very disappointed. But anyway, I'm still waiting for an apology. But I want to compliment Mayor Rolf in how he conducts our council meeting. He does it with decorum. He always refers to the council members by council member Haga or council member so-and-so. I went down to the Salt Lake County Council meeting. I couldn't believe it. They call each other by first names. There's no decorum. Uh, the district attorney of Salt Lake County, they refer to him as Sim. And of all council meetings, so I'm trying, every time I go down there, they have a citizen's comment too. So I am trying to straighten them out and to go ahead. Now, slowly they're starting to, but still, they refer to each other by first names. It's, uh, it is really bad. Now, last two weeks ago, we had, uh, or maybe it was a month ago, we had a thing saying that our uh, traffic violations were down. I want to know why our traffic citations down. There is so many cars that go through. Every intersection I go through, they go through a red light. Hey, our people, our people are not driving more carefully. And that, that particular slide, we should have had a lot, lot, lot more citations. We're losing money. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Christensen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening. I'm Carolyn Christensen, and I am here along with some friends that are there to represent all the other residents of Jordan Valley Senior Housing. Uh, those of you who are, who are here for the meeting on August 25th might remember that we were here to support a petition for our crosswalk. We came tonight to say thank you for listening to our concerns and valuing us enough to unanimously vote at, in that meeting to install a crosswalk in front of our facility so that we could safely cross. And it's absolutely awesome. You should come over there across the street just to see how awesome it is. Um, not only do our senior residents get to use it, school children use it all the time. And now I understand there's even a crossing guard there, so fabulous. We would like to give special recognition to Bill Baranowski, the city traffic engineer, and Wendell Rigby, the director of public works department, and other members of their team. When we first started this process last June, Wendell graciously volunteered to bring others along with him to a meeting that we requested over at our building. They did a walkabout with us and sat down and listened to our concerns, treated us with respect and caring as they have throughout our, the entire process until this crosswalk was installed. So we really appreciate the respect and the caring with which we have been treated and would highly commend them. We didn't realize just how much work goes into a crosswalk, but my goodness, it's impressive. Um, it's, it is just awesome, and we, we appreciate it so much. We just, you know, like once again to express our profound gratitude and say this is how government should work for the people. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Backman. That gal's just so sweet. Oh my gosh. Um, I am coming to you on behalf of the neighborhood in the traditional flood zone. I'm just touching faces with you. This is kind of a, like a reset because there's new faces that haven't been here before. And so I created kind of a little packet that tells you kind of our story, um, pictures of our worst nightmare. And that's what we fear, and that's, that's what thunderstorms mean to us. Um, we want to let you know that we appreciate the City Council. We appreciate that you listen to us, that you created an avenue to protect us. And um, we know that the trunk line is not going to be completed until 2019, 2020, if everything goes on schedule. And we're grateful, just so grateful. We're grateful for the, the things that have been done for Victor and Patty and that particular neighborhood to try and take the pressure off. Um, I went ahead and made a little copy of the notes for the grant program so that you don't have to go back and look through them because as time goes on, things seem to fade a little bit as to what you guys provided for us. Um, and we appreciate that. We want to let you know we're, we're on your side. We want this to work. We want it all to work and um, be protected. We don't want to spend any more of the city's money than we have to, period. We just want this to work and be a partner with you guys. Um, I, did, I did have a little bit of stress um, this week. Patty called for sandbags. We've been sandbags since 2008. And the response that I got on Friday was I, I did, got a quick call saying that sandbags wouldn't be provided, that they, they feel that they've done enough in that area and it's worth the risk, they think, and that there's been an avenue if Patty and Victor's house gets damaged again, there's money there to refix it. We, we don't want to be refixed. <laughs> we, we would just like to see the two pallets of sandbags come in. We'll gracefully put them across the front of the driveway because of that little negative slope and we'll hang out with you and let you get your trunk line in and try not to spend any more of city money. I'm a taxpayer in West Jordan. I don't want to pay any more money. But I do ask the council 
for that just little level of um, insurance so that I can sleep at night. This weekend, as the rains came and we saw the big thunderheads, I just, I don't sleep well. It's just really crazy. So the sandbags do make a difference for us. Um, to give you a little bit of background with Victor and Patty's house, you know that they are in Montana. You know that. Their sister, my daughter, lives in that house. It is a family event for that house. We, we, I have two sons that work for Kone. Both of them are in the same situation. They bought homes and were transferred out. So they both have their homes. They're hoping to return to Utah. Who knows when that will be? But they have a house here and it's protected by, by our family and by you because by your graciousness, you created a way to protect us. So please, can we have our two pallets of sandbags? Please. Thank you. Thank you, I just had one question. Um, and Councilmember McConaughey has one as well. Who gave you the date of 2018-19 for the completion of the trunk line? Because you have information I don't have. No, I was just looking at the master plan when you guys were batting it around. I know some things have been pushed out. And I know that it's 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 like four years. They told me it would be approximately a four four year event before the truck line was trunk line was completed. So I just used that date. We'll get that revised. Thank okay, you. get that revised because we think four years. So. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for allowing me to exercise a little personal privilege, real quick. Um, one of your neighbors contacted me on Facebook, Lindy Christensen, talking about how the change when we started doing some of the improvements over the neighborhood to prevent the plumbing, mm -hmm. or excuse me, prevent the flooding as we plumbed in some of the new fixtures in there. It removed some of the dips that had been used to help with traffic calming. Mm -hmm. Our good uh, director of public works, Mr. Rigby, had contacted me asking who in the neighborhood he could reach out to, and apparently Lindy was getting in touch with me, but she had moved on. Would you be okay being the contact for I, that? I would. I, I know that area, like the back of my Perfect. hand. <laughs> Perfect. We have your contact information, then I'll share that with uh, Mr. Ruby. Thank you. Yes, and we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Okay, that's all who have signed up to speak tonight. Anyone else wishing to speak on a, a topic uh, tonight? We do have two public hearings later in the Three, actually, three public hearings later. If you're here to speak on one of those items, there'll be a time later for you to speak, but any other subject, now would be the time. Please come forward. As a reminder, please state your name and address, and you'll be allowed three minutes. Hi, my name is Tina Lyon. My address is 7683 South, 4730 West. Um, my husband, four kids, and I moved into our Wheatland Estates home in September of 2011. We moved um, straight from Oregon, and the list of cities we were looking for a home in did not include West Jordan. However, the agent we were working with brought us to one home in West Jordan. We chose this home over the other neighborhoods because of the open space, view of the airport, view of the mountains, and somewhat of a buffer between homes and commercial. Um, I took a group of scouts to a planning commission meeting a couple months ago in, for the city, and one of the discussions was that West Jordan City wanted to be a destination rather than just a stop. The open space um, near us has provided hours of recreational entertainment for my family. I don't care so much about losing property value if the parcel was built on because I plan on staying where I am, but I care about losing the open space where life lessons can be learned. A developed park is a nice alternative, but I feel the open space really caters to preteens and teens, and there just aren't a lot of places for this age group. It's a fantastic recreational area that costs nearly nothing to maintain. I've seen many people, not from our neighborhood, also use the open space to play or walk dogs. Wheatland Estates has a lot of young families, if the open space is kept, I believe these younger families will want to stay in this neighborhood rather than being anxious to move on. Please do not sell this land. Make one more neighborhood be a destination rather than a stopping place. Thanks. Hi, 
later. Um, I'm also from Wheatland Estates. Um, I'm actually their acting HOA president. And so I felt inclined to come and speak with you guys to give some insight into our community and um, why would, we're passionate about keeping that. Excuse funding. me, would you just state your name and address, oh, please, for the record? It's Grace Perry, and I live on 7632 South 4730 West in Wheatland Estates. Thank you. Um, so in regards to that parcel, our HOA solely exists to um, maintain a roundabout park strip and retention pond that were there because the builder had built them to um, for the future park or open space access to that. So other than that, we don't have fancy pools. We don't have anything other than these just small little green areas to go to there with 90 homes supporting that. Um, that parcel of open space is a desirable place for us that we sought out with our families to have an area that, um, I want to go by my notes so I don't mess anything up. <laughs> um, when we decided to build our homes, the natural wetlands and wildlife inhabiting the open space include deer, fox, hawks, and other wild um, born fowls, <clears throat> providing great ecological and educational opportunities for our kids to learn and live. This by far is at the forefront of why our community is passionate about making sure this space is not lost. The opportunity to live by such natural green, unspoiled land with this space to actively enjoy the outdoors and become more, um, is becoming more and more difficult nowadays. Um, we are um, intend to expend all efforts and to um, accomplish our goals and that would be to keep that parcel open um, green space near our community. Um, I think it would also be important to point out that in the future, if it does change and it doesn't become a future park or open green space, it seems to keep a good relation with us as um, uh, community members to continue to have us support the funding for the maintenance on those properties is a, a little unethical because it no longer serves the purpose to which we were told when we purchased our homes, why we were buying into the HOA and what are those funds we're going to be going towards. So I would hope that you would take all of these things into consideration when you look into um, developing that parcel of land. Thanks. Mayor? Council Member Jacob. Yes. Can you come back up real quick? I just have one quick question for you. Thanks. Um, just for so I can contact in the future, um, I, I have your email address because you sent me an email. Yes. But um, does your HOA have a, a, a name or a management group that you Yeah. Work? So we use CSS. That's our management um, company that we use just so that we don't have to go knocking on our neighbors' doors for funds and, and things like and that. And it's just called the Wheatland Estates HOA? Wheatland Estates HOA. Perfect. Yep. Wheatland so Estates HOA. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Councilmember McConaughey, did you have? Councilmember Burton. You guys are. Oh, you're all pushing your button. Do you have one? Please. Thanks, Mayor. Um, you know, I appreciate all the neighbors that have reached out to us as council because if that's. We don't like to see our residents just ignore things that happen around their neighborhood. So I appreciate that to know. And, you know, I caught myself really questioning what I did in voting for this surplus. And, but, and I'm going to use that word, but, um, on December, let me give you a little background. On December 23rd, a previous council, not this council, because there were other members, defeated a, a motion to surplus that property. And what happened is then the next council came on. I, Mayor Rob, myself, um, Councilman Nichols, and um, I forget who all is still on, were uh, there four new council members elected. And a councilman brought this back to as a reconsideration without a public hearing with the new council. Now, what's happened is the parcel that's in, in um, question is really that we're all you all are questioning as open space is 54 acres and what we really did and I want to uh, point my uh, direction towards our economic develop, economic development director is we sectioned off a portion that we want to develop as a council and we were unanimous um, in January to sell it, to develop for new neighbors, not for commercial. We do not own the par partial on 7800 South. 
but we did keep and that's why again i'll direct you to our staff our economic development director we did keep the open space that was bought and purchased and designated for our future residents um and that i think it totals 25 acres it's a lot of property so you know i i think what what we would like to do is uh, what i'd like to do and suggest to some of the residents is let's get together with our staff because our staff can explain what happened it was during christmas and after an election and after the first of the year and i think there's been some miscommunication i think you might like what's being proposed by the council and by our staff for the future of that property we are not and i'm going to say it again we are not giving away open space property that was purchased and designated for our future i'm going to call it future outdoor um, recreation facility and we're talking about 25 acres but that's a 50 almost 52 acre parcel and it's all one parcel but it's been split we only surplus uh, 21.9 I think so I would ask the residents to contact our staff he's well, he's been willing to um, take that responsibility and let's at least start some communication so you know what we're going to do and what's going to happen nothing's happened it's never it has not been sold no one has purchased it but I would sure like to have more input from you because it's going to be your future neighbors too. So thanks, Mayor. Appreciate that personal privilege. Just a point of clarification: it has been surplus. The south portion of the property has been surplus. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, I will close the citizens' comments portion and move to the consent items. And I would like to pull item C and item G until the next regular scheduled meeting. Um, I think for myself, uh, item C needs more legal opinion than I have at this point. And item G, I need a lot more information before I can move on that. I would make that a motion uh, and see if I can get a second on that. A uh, motion by Mayor Rolf and a second by Councilmember Haga. Discussion of the motion. Councilmember Jacob first. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just for clarification, your motion is to table C and G until next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I just want to make sure that yeah. we're voting to approve. Or no, no, that's a motion to table. Thank you. Councilmember Rickles. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Rigby, could you identify on those two, on C and G in the consent calendar, either of those time periods that we have to address tonight or is putting it off as a... I can't, uh, I don't know whether C is or not. That's not my, that's not my item, but G is, is not time sensitive. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Oka, maybe you could answer C. Is that one? Is that one that we can postpone without? I, I don't know if that's time sensitive or not, but if it's the decision of the council to table it, that's fine. Thank you. Council Member Hagan. Maybe I can answer. I don't know if uh, our attorney's online. He is now. He is. Mm -hmm. So council, you know, uh, this is your agenda item, and you and I discussed this today based on some of the past background on it. Wouldn't it be prudent to postpone it for, until you come back? I certainly can address the issues. I'm talking as if you all can hear me, so correct me if you cannot. Um, we can but I certainly can address some of the issues that were raised in our phone call. Uh, it's my understanding you're concerned about the likelihood of a new owner uh, trying to exercise additional rights that may not be allowed under the development agreement. We want to make sure uh, property owners are aware of the limitations, both statutorily and uh, present under the development agreement. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? Well, we were just talking about tabling 
uh, item C that you uh, sponsored on the agenda for consent. And since you're out of town and there's some major legal issues, um, myself and obviously the mayor and our, would like the table until next council meeting. David, this is Melanie. Are you aware that it's the consent acknowledgement of the uh, station at Gardner Rail? That's the item they're wanting to continue for two weeks. Is that you, Melanie? Yes. Can you not hear me very well? I can. I can tell that you're speaking, but I, I can hear Councilman Hager. I could not hear you. Okay. You'll, you'll be able to hear me better through this one. Um, so I just want to make sure that there's clarification that the item they're talking about continuing for two weeks from tonight is the consent and acknowledgement and the partial assignment assumption development agreement for the station at Gardner Mill. That's my understanding, uh, which has been assigned 5C in the consent agenda. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. And you're okay? Uh, Council Member Haga's question was, are you okay with continuing it until the 25th of May? I'm okay with it. I suspect uh, folks at uh, Gardner Village may have some concerns, but I will address those concerns directly with them. Uh, I can start uh, communicating with them as soon as tomorrow. Uh, certainly, we'll be back by Monday. Other questions? Council Member? Sir. Yes. My question is, I understand we have a special council meeting one week from today. This will not be on that meeting. It will be in two weeks. Is that no, correct? We'll have it on the Thank you. Just want to clarify. Our our That's a work session next uh, week, a budget work session and uh, rec center workshop Wonderful. on the 18th. So. Let's vote. Council Member Burton? Yes. Mayor Rob? Yes. Council Member Jacob? Aye. Council Member McConaughey? Aye. Council Member Haga? Yes. Council Member Nichols? Yes. Council Member Rice? Aye. The vote passes seven in favor. If there are no other consent items to be pulled, a motion to approve. Council Member Nichols? Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the remaining items on the consent calendar. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Nichols and a second by Councilmember McConaughey. Discussion to the motion? Let's go. Councilmember Rice? Aye. Councilmember Jacob? Aye. Mayor Rall? Yes. Councilmember Nichols? Yes. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Haga? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Vote passes seven in favor. Item 6A, public hearing item, receive public input and consider for approval the fiscal year 2016-2017 Community Development Block Grant Home and Programs Income Funds. David? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Chuck Tarver is here to make the presentation on the allocation of the funds. Great. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, most of the members on the City Council now has had the opportunity to participate in the um, Community Development Block Grant Committee over the past years. There's a couple of new ones which in the next year or two will add you to the committee uh, to experience the applicants coming in making the presentations to the committee. We had a total of three committee meetings this year, uh, approximately the two Two of the meetings lasted two hours where each agency would come in, make a 10 to 15 minute presentation to the committee, and then five to 10 minutes for questions and answers. Uh, this year, we actually received a little increase in our annual allocation of 14125 up to a total of 555341 uh, out of these funds, we combine it each year with our revolving loan fund to make funds available for the housing rehabilitation account. 
And also this year we added in 200,000 from prior years that have actually been approved in previous meetings for uh, ADA ramp improvements that we tied together with the city street overlay program. Uh, this year we received requests from um, several public service agencies and each year we can allocate 15% of our annual allocation for these activities. This year we can allocate $83,301 for public service agencies. What we do is we publish and put out the application there in October of 2015 with applications due during December 2015. Following that, the staff reviews the requests that we receive and then make them available to the CDBG committee for consideration and review. This year, we funded most of the requests 100%, which is unusual. Uh, usually we have less money than requests, but this year we was pretty close to even on it. Uh, South Valley Sanctuary this year uh, requested 15, we recommend 15,000 for funding. Legal Aid Society of Salt Lake requested 12,000 and fortunately we can recommend 12,000 for them. Family Support Center with their crisis nursery, same thing, we requested 10 and we allocated 10 for them. The Road Home Shelter with a Homeless Operation Shelter down in Salt Lake requested 12,000 and committee recommended 8,000 for them. The Community Action Program <coughs> Food Pantry, um, Neighborhood Food Pantry in Midville that serves West Jordan residents requested six and we proposed six for them. A new client that we have this year is Primary Health Care Clinic which provides dental service to low moderate income residents, requested 10,000, and the committee proposed 7,500 for them. The community action program also requested a rent assistance program for emergencies, situations of 15,000, and we have a fund balance of 9,301 recommended for them. The YWCA got their full request allocation of 75. $100. Big Brothers, Big Sisters got a small increase from last year up to 8000 a little bit off of their request of 10000 So all of these public service agencies, whether they're located within the city of West Jordan or not, serves 100% low moderate income residents of West Jordan and they document all of the services that they provide. So this year the committee recommendation is equal to the 15% of the $83,301 that we can allocate towards public services. Each year, HUD allows us to take 20% of the annual allocation for program administration and planning. Uh, this year, Wasatch Front Regional Council, which is our annual dues, is $3,905, and the city program administration is $107,163, which goes to salaries benefit and travel and things like that. So we cap out the 20% that HUD gives us every year and um, take that from the allocation. Other projects that we're uh, proposed funding this year is we currently have basically three years left on our Section 108 loan that we use to construct the West Jordan Senior Citizen Center. Uh, the annual payment on that is $158,000 this year. Each year we allocate $40,000 out of the existing revolved loan account for the housing rehab program to make uh, home repairs for low to high income persons within the city. Under the home buyers program, we allocate $100,000 per year for roughly 20 um, housing units for low to moderate income residents to, well, residents come in and purchase a home uh, that currently do not own a home within the city of West Jordan. As I mentioned earlier in the past, we've approved 200,000 for ADA ramps that will combine with the city um, overlay program this summer and we'll install the ramps and this will allow the actual paving program to do 200,000 more actually in on street overlay facility. 
Under the SIS program, which is emergency home repair, we allocate $90,000 per year. They're full requests. And this year, one of the new requests was South Valley Services, which is South Valley Sanctuary, requested $10,000 new repairs for their fence to keep the site secure. And the committee felt the need to fund that project. That leaves us with a balance of $2,972 that we set aside for contingencies or unexpected expenses in the program year. Council Member Rice participated in the committee process this year. And I think we may have a couple non-profits here that I'd like to introduce themselves, name the agency they're with, and then open it up for any questions you guys have, if that's appropriate. That would be in order. Thank you, Mayor. I'm glad to be up here. Jen Campbell with South Valley Services. I'm Roger Borgnick with ASSIST with the Emergency Home Repair and Accessibility Design Program. And thank you for your support. I am Britta with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Utah. And thank you so much for helping us as we serve at-risk kids in your community. Hi, I'm Laura Watts. I'm a resident of West Jordan. I also represent um, the Family Support Center. And we just wanted to say thank you for your support of us, for also providing um, critical services to the residents of West Jordan for our crisis nurseries. Thank you. Any questions for Chuck from the council? Looks like you did a good job, Chuck. Thanks. I will now open the public hearing for item 6A. If you're here to speak on this item, now would be the time. See you one, no one. I will move back to the council for a motion. Council Member Rice. Thank you, Mayor. Having been able to go through this process, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I want to express my appreciation to Chuck Tarver for the great job he does in organizing this and, and helping us to meet with all these organizations that do such great things for our residents in the community. And I want to thank them very much as well for spending the time with us to, to show us what they do. It's, it's really astonishing and it was very eye-opening for me to see how many services and how many good people are in this community that are doing such great things for us. And so I wanted to say thank you for that. I move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mayor Rolf and a second by Council Member McConaughey. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, Ms. Wolf. Council Member Haga? Yes. Council Member Rice? Aye. Council Member McConaughey? Aye. Council Member Jacob? Aye. Council Member Nichols? Yes. Mayor Rolf? Yes. Council Member Burton? Yes. The vote passes seven in favor. Item 6B, public hearing item. Receive public input and consider for approval Ordinance 16-20. Twenty ratifying the preliminary development plan for Longview South subdivision with a residential density of 3.19 dwelling units per acre located at 8200 South, 6400 West. Chance 13.5 LLC. Victor Barnes, applicant. David? Yes, Larry Gartner is here to address this issue. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, Longview South is located in the Highlands Development uh, down at the southwest corner 
of the Hunter's Master Plan. It was previously approved in 2014, but the applicant um, did not act upon the uh, previous preliminary approval, and so it's back again. It's gone through the process, so it's been um, to the Planning Commission twice, and then this will be the second time it's been to the Council. Now, the boundaries have not changed. Uh, uh, it's largely the same as it was. As you can see, this is how, excuse me, um, it's bounded between 6400 and 6700 West, and the southern boundary is 8200 South uh, in the Highlands. Uh, this is a, a general layout, how it lays, um, or how it is developed within the Lone View uh, subdivision. Uh, this is a current layout of the project. Uh, it's bounded on the north by Lone View North, hence the name Lone View South. Um, it's 63 homes on uh, about 20 acres. There's a large wash that runs through the uh, uh, project and it will be left as open space and a trail connection will connect with the existing trail that was uh, built with Longview North. Uh, the zoning is a low density single family residential. As I said, it's about 20 acres. Uh, the density without biops is two units per acre, which would equal 39 homes. Uh, that 63% is incorrect. They're actually asking for a 59% density increase, and that will be a buy up to about 3.2 homes per acre, which will result in 63 homes. Um, it has good connectivity with the other uh, neighborhoods to the north, and as Orchard Heights comes on here in the next uh, while, it will be connected via that uh, trail uh, that's on the one knuckle. Um, I won't be awkward and reach over my head and point. You can look and see where that trail is, but it's running diagonally to the northwest. Uh, there's no cul-de-sac design in this, and so uh, that generally tends to make our fire department very happy with no cul-de-sacs. Um, there is a park, a small park and an open space uh, at this location on the north of Lone View South, which all received density buy-ups. Uh, there is a approximately uh, about a third to a half acre of green space will be lawn, uh, a pavilion, picnic benches, that type of thing that will be maintained by the, the assessment area in the Highlands. There's a trail connection, um, of course, trash, trash receptacles that will all be maintained by the assessment area. Um, part of the Highlands is establishing an identity. Uh, there will be th four monuments, each of the location, as you can see on the screen. Um, and then fencing, of course, along the washes, uh, the Highlands has tended to use the split rail fencing as kind of a theme. And then along uh, the back of homes next to the church and the open uh, farm ground right now to the south, there will be a vinyl fencing that will match the color of the uh, wall that will be along the arterial streets of 8200 South and 6400 West. Street lights in the Highlands or the WSPA are reduced. Uh, they can be no greater than 250 feet apart, and they're a much lower pedestrian uh, type light that uh, does establish a theme in the Highlands. 75% of the homes will have re recessed front loaded garages, and all of these things I'm talking about, uh, the applicant received uh, density buy ups for this. Uh, they'll be covered front porches in 50% of the homes, and all of the homes will have enhanced window and door treatments, as you can see. And the approved building materials are stucco, stucco brick, and stone, um, and composite board and shingles, basically hardy board, and that type of uh, material with no vinyl or aluminum siding. 
And so staff recommends uh, approval or ratification of the development plan uh, for Lone View South with a density of 3.19 units per acre for 63 single family homes uh, titled Lone View South. Do you have any questions for me at this point? Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just one question, Larry. Uh, mm -hmm. Appreciate your uh, your presentation. Uh, on page 20 of the of the uh, development plan, uh, it just lists the minimum lot area and the average lot area. And I just wanted to make sure that these were not that this is what's being proposed. The minimum lot area is 7,200 square feet, and the average lot area is 9,231. Yes. Okay. When I was reading the Planning Commission minutes, somebody mentioned something about third of acre lots, and uh, I didn't think it sounded right or looked right, so I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. The document's correct. That comment at the Planning Commission was not correct. Right. So. Thank you. Council Member Hager. Thanks, Mayor. Um, oh, can you pull the the diagram? I call I call this a panhandled neighborhood because <laughs> I. Is that good enough, or do you want me to go back to them? My, my question is, and I, I asked it of, uh, your, of our city planner, but um, I, I just want to get this on public record. So where the panhandle goes out, there's a future development on this one. On another diagram, it actually shows this another neighborhood. And... Um, my, the, if we're rezoning this, and my question, because I didn't talk to uh, to you about this, if we're building a solid fence, um, does that not put that whole neighbor, that future development alienated from the subject? You're talking about right here? No, th those will be backyards. It'll be backyard against backyard. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. That's right a backyard. Here, right here, those will be backyards. Actually, the but the reason why they're not developing is because this property that actually will be on your meeting in two weeks for a zone change. Okay. And so it will. It's not being developed in the WSPA. So that's that's what I need to hear. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing of item six B. If you're here to speak on this item, now would be the time. Please. I am Victor Barnes, the applicant uh, representing the owner and Peterson Development, the master developer and developer of this subdivision. Uh, don't have too much to add. Uh, we did not develop Longview North, but we liked the way it turned out, so we wanted to basically duplicate that. Uh, we think it's coming along very well up there. And so we use the same engineer, we use the same planner, and so this feels very much like Longview North. I hope you're pleased with the way that is going, that development and the variety of homes and, and such in there. Uh, the only minor changes had to do with phasing. We now have a builder involved, Fieldstone Homes, who we feel has a good reputation and does a good job. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for me. Questions from council? I think you're good. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward. Alexandra Efremo, 3735 Judd Circle. Uh, I can't, I'm looking at the diagram and I can't see any streets in the middle there. Um, can somebody please explain where the streets are? Where the trees are depicted, uh, they line the streets in all cases there. If you can see that. So oh. back here, those little round green. Uh, trees. Um, but it looks like the, those two places are the streets are narrower than that top than that top street. It's just a drop. Is that true? I mean, are those are are the uh, vertical streets narrower 
the streets all meet city standards. So. I'm sorry. The streets all meet city standards. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, because they look smaller. The streets look smaller. I'm just concerned about fire and and uh, uh, garbage pickup and things like that. So, okay, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing of item six B and return to the council for a motion. Councilmember Nichols. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, I move the City Council ratify the uh, through ordinance, the Planning Commission's approval of the density for Longview South. I'll second. A motion by Council Member Nichols and a second by Mayor Rawl. Discussion to the motion? Seeing on the smoke. Council Member McConaughey? Aye. Council Member Burton? Yes. Council Member Haga? Yes. Mayor Rawl? Yes. Council Member Jacob? Aye. Councilmember Rice? Aye. Councilmember Nichols? Yes. Vote passes, seven in favor. Public hearing item 6C. Receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 16 21 amending the 2009 City Code, section 13 5C, Plan Development Zone, section 13 51, Westside Planning Area, and section 15. 3-8 permitting procedures development development plan review citywide applicability city of west jordan applicant david yes scott lambert is here to address this issue thanks mayor uh, members of the members of the council um, i don't have any pretty slides to present uh, this is just a text amendment um, it sounds like quite a mouthful mayor when you read that off but uh, back in um, in March, uh, March 23rd, uh, I took a different text amendment before the council uh, regarding the cap and grade, uh, which is also on this uh, agenda on uh, the business item. But during that uh, council hearing, uh, the council directed staff to uh, not only uh, uh, slightly tweak the, the cap and grade, but also uh, look at the way we review and approve these uh, development plans associated with, with these larger master plans, especially on the west side of the city. So that's what we did. We went back and we looked at the code and um, years ago when uh, the Highlands master plan and the west side plan was created, uh, the, the council at the time um, delegated to the planning commission the approval authority for preliminary development plans, which in essence um, sets the density. Now. Planning Commission is an elect is, is an appointed body, and they don't have the legislative authority to enact ordinance. Uh, and and so, uh, the previous item that you just reviewed that was a, a uh, needed action to ratify the density of that Longview South. Um, the uh, the direction given to staff on the 23rd was to uh, uh, basically take uh, the code and change the city council from a ratifying body to an approval body when it comes to reviewing these development plans. And so, in essence, that's what you have before you. We've gone through and, and uh, the, the language was kind of cooked into the nooks and crannies of various sections of the code, and that's why the, the packet is so thick. But to really boil it down to its es essence, uh, this is just changing the, uh, the council to the approval authority instead of the ratifying authority for these development plans. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, really no questions on this one, rather just a sincere thank you uh, to Mr. Langford for his work on getting this taken care of. But I know I had the opportunity to go back and forth with him a little bit on some of the concerns that I had. Um, I wish this had been done four years ago. Uh, there have been some issues that we've run up with run up against with a couple other developments and where we find ourselves in the predicament of this planning commission has to, well, never mind, I'll skip all the background that's already been shared, but I think this person's in a much better position as an elected body to be able to make the, the decisions that are requested and desired by the folks whom we represent rather than having that delegated to an appointed body. I think that 
it's the right thing to do to return that authority to this body. So I'm very, very happy to see this coming up for a vote. So that's my only comment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just one question, Scott, if I may. Um, does this apply to all zones and all development plans, or is this only for planned community, planned residential development? Uh, I, I skimmed over it as well as I could, but I had a 400-page budget to look at, too. <laughs> so any any development plan that, that uh, comes before the, the city, um, this would apply to that. Okay. Now, the, the PC and the PRD zones are planned community and planned residential zone, zones. Those are the only performance-based zones that we have uh, in in the city. The I guess the the only the only other exception would be the uh, the uh, uh, Highlands Master Plan. Uh, this does include the Highlands Master Plan. So, moving forward, uh, for example, Orchard Heights, uh, it's uh, north of the Long Beach South uh, that you've reviewed today. That would um, that would. Uh, this new code would apply to that. So the uh, the approval of that development plan would come to the council. Okay, so it is only for performance-based zones? Correct. Perfect, thanks. We'll now open the public hearing for item 6C. If you're here to speak on this item, now would be time. Victor Barnes, representing Peterson Development, 225 South, 200 East in Salt Lake City. Um, just wanted to point out that through the development agreement that we already have in the Highlands Development, uh, it specifically states we have vested rights under the WSPA, and so we question whether you can now change some of that procedure uh, under the uh, under the WSPA and then process that we go through. Uh, we don't feel the process is broken. Uh, we think working with staff who's competent and who uh, does a good job working with us as we try to establish a buy-up and then going through the review of the Planning Commission is enough. Um, it's just seems like one more layer of another body is, is more than we need uh, to take care of and assure we provide a good subdivision, good product to the city of West Jordan. So we want to express our opposition and, and uh, give you those reasons. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing item 6C. Return to the council. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I would recognize the, the comments from Peterson Development. Um, however, this is done in a much broader scope, not just then, it's looking at all future development out there. So I'm sure staff will continue to work to find the appropriate means. So uh, I'm, I'm not overly concerned with, um, with, with that part. Uh, that being said, if there's no other comments, I'm ready to make a motion. Looks like we have a couple more. Then I will hold off. Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, my question's for, uh, or city attorney, if you can hear me, uh, David, if you can hear me, um, is would the Highlands be grandfathered in then on this, and and would the planning commission continue to have that uh, the that buy up authority over the, uh, the that buy up, I guess, density setting authority that the city council then just ratifies or and or doesn't. Um, just I can't hear you, and the answer is I believe they have vested rights that they could legitimately argue successfully if we were to be pushed uh, to litigation. I had uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, started reaching out to Peterson because I am concerned that they feel uh, like they're being treated fairly and that the city is being fully uh, open and forthcoming in the process. Uh, I asked uh, both Justin and Victor and other members of Peterson to take a look at this statute. If they think there is something that we're missing or I'm missing, I've encouraged them to get information to me uh, to address before we ever get to the point where we start finger pointing. 
My hope would be that um, if there is a disagreement as to its application going forward, um, I would hope to be able to bring it to the entire council so as to avoid um, costly litigation one way or another and uh, have some type of discussion well before we head off to court. Um, but I do believe that they have a vested interest right now, uh, clearly delineated by the timelines of which they've been complying with, if that answers your question. That, that does perfectly. And then I have a, a follow-up question uh, for Scott. Um, how, how much does this change the process? In other words, will the Planning Commission still see this, still, still uh, provide a recommendation, as opposed to an approval that we then ratify? It would be more like a rezone where they have a recommendation and then we legislate it up here. Is that Right. The, the process really doesn't change a whole lot. And, and in fact, in my uh, opinion, it should streamline it. Um, I, I reviewed at length the development agreement with, uh, in regard to the Highlands development. And Mr. Berkey is, is correct that there are certain densities and entitlements vested, but uh, uh, we will have to look at the actual process. Um, I'm not an attorney. I'm just sitting in this seat. <laughs> um, but uh, my, my opinion is that this, this does not violate any of those terms in that agreement. Uh, the, the process, uh, it, it's, again, it's more streamlined. The Planning Commission will review it, uh, provide a recommendation to the City Council, um, and, and then they, you have the choice to either approve or deny or, or make modifications. Uh, very similar to what uh, you do already with your, your time's up, Scott. Sorry. <laughs> this is very this is very similar to what uh, the council and the commission, or how the, the 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 council and the commission interact with rezoning property. Right. Uh, I, I see it in a very very similar vein. You're you're establishing density, and set, in, in essence, when you look at these master plans, you're creating a unique zoning district for that area. And so, uh, I really uh, like this amendment. Uh, it puts uh, puts the process more in alignment with the rest of the procedures already in our code. That's that's what I saw as well. Thank you, Councilmember Hagan. Thanks, Mayor. Um, you know when uh, council, last time we, this came before us, it was proposed that uh, we change this to council approval and, and consent. I see all the changes here, which I like, by the way, and I'm a, a proponent of it. Um, I would like again. Uh, just as a note, I don't know how we ever got away from approval because, you know, this body is the elected body of the people. This is the body that should make the approvals and, and the, the approvals that the commission makes to us. The commission serves, according to state law, the privilege of the council. And we serve, thank you goodness, to the privilege of our residents. So. I hope we understand how important is this. I, I applaud Councilman McConaughey for bringing this up some weeks back and just want to echo my approval. Thanks, Mayor. Now a motion to be in order. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we amend the 2009 City Code, Section 15, or excuse me, Section 13-5C, Plan Development Zones, Section 13-5J, Westside Planning Area, Section 15-3-8, Permitting Procedures, Dash Development Plan Review. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey and a second by Councilmember Haga. Discussion to the motion. One last piece of clarification, Mayor. If needed, I did not mention it's Ordinance 16-21, so I would add that to the motion. You. Second that. Second. Okay. Let's Mayor Roll? Yes. Councilmember Haga? Yes. Councilmember Rice? Aye. Councilmember Nichols? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Jacobs? Aye. Vote passes seven in favor. Okay, that completes the public hearing items for tonight. We have two more business items, but I failed to. Um, after the citizens' comments and the questions I had, I would like to direct 
our city manager to bring back to the city council by next council meeting the updated schedule for the 70th South storm drain project. Before our city manager's time frame, the council on a 6-1 vote gave directions for the city to bond for the project, which we know we've done and have the funding available, and immediately build the project. And it looks like now it's been stretched out for three more years longer than what the council directed at that time. So I need an updated schedule on that. And I want to make sure that I know that we're designing all utilities in 70th at the same time with the design engineer. But the council at that time, because it was an emergency, was only concerned with the building of the storm drain portion. And because we felt like it was an emergency then, and I still feel like it's an emergency now, unless this council wants to bring it back as an agendized item, I'd like to have it brought up to us. So, Council Member McConaughey, do you have a comment? One clarification, one comment. When you said the next council meeting, this would be the special workshop next week? No, this is for the next regular council meeting. Okay. The second thing I wanted to bring up was we heard in citizen comments concerns about residents obtaining sandbags. I would want to see if there's any opposition to giving staff direction to make sure that they can be readily available, have sandbags readily available. It's such an easy fix. Is anyone opposed to doing that? Okay. They've suffered enough with this flooding. Thank you. So we have Council Member Hagan, and then we'll move on. Just, you know, so because we have a new city manager and some new council member, I'm wondering with this direction from the mayor, and I think the council's in agreement, that we bring back the minutes of what we directed staff to do for our residents. Because, you know, it's a heated time. There's a lot of issues out there. But if we can get down to the facts of what needs to be done right away, you know, that's, I'm hoping we can find out. Because there's things, I think, that can be done sooner than later. Thanks. Okay. Business item 7A, discussion and possible action regarding resolution 16-80, adopting the tentative budgets for general fund, special revenue funds, capital projects fund, water fund, sewer fund, solid waste fund, storm drain fund, and internal service funds for fiscal year 2016-2017, and setting June 8th, 2016, as the budget public hearing. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. It's the obligation of the city manager to bring a balanced budget and covering the entire spending package of the city for each fiscal year. Every organization and every aspect of the spending ended at about $120 million total. That was delivered to you two weeks ago. And this week we're asking for you to adopt it. Basically, then it becomes your budget to change as you see fit. It would no longer become a city manager budget. It is balanced. It could be approved and move on right now, unlike other budgets in the past. So at this point, I would recommend you approve it, and then we would set a time to discuss it during the workshop sessions. Council Member Hagan. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks for the budget. I read it, the whole thing, seriously, and I studied it. And it is balanced from revenues to expenditures, but I don't think it's accurate. And so I'm not going to move forward with this if this motion is approved, because I believe there's some inaccuracies. I emailed the inaccuracies to you without response, and therefore I'm going to probably oppose this business item. Thanks, Mayor. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. A quick point of clarification. My understanding is that if we ratify this and use this as a starting point, if for some reason we're not able to reach a consensus on the final budget, this would be what we fall back on for the upcoming year. So this would become the de facto budget for next year. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. And just to be clear for the record, that's only if the council does not ratify a amended budget. Motion would be in order. Council Member McConnell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ra rather not a motion, now that my question's been answered, there were, there were a couple comments that I wanted to share. Um, I, I very much appreciate the time and effort that's gone into the budget, so hopefully my comments don't come across as derogatory. Rather, these were just some of the, the places where I had, had some concern. Um, the first item of concern that I had is looking at the revenues that are anticipated for next year seem to be substantially ahead of what we saw for this current year. Um, I'll save the, the detail of my, my comments for our session next week, but some of the things I wanted to point out. Uh, sales tax revenue, as you look at the prior year compared to this year that we're about to end up, we're expecting it'll be just a little bit shy, just down about half a percent. But looking forward, we think that's gonna be a 4.2% jump. So that's uh, right about 688, so almost $700,000 additional revenue, when historically we've seen that as flat. Um, we're seeing additional jumps, like cable franchise was down 1%, we're expecting that will jump up 8.3%. We saw telecom was flat, utility franchise was down 3.3. We were expecting jumps of 6.2 and 6.3 respectively. Um, I, I'm questioning the, the amounts for the building permits. I know we have a lot of development that's been happening, but we were down 4.9% year over year despite all of the permits that were issued this year, we saw a lot of permits this year, uh, and we think it's gonna jump by, or the proposed budget suggests it's gonna jump by 28% of the total of $400,000 additional revenue coming in. Um, so, so there's a number of taxes and different revenues that I question. The, the big ones, the, the two biggest ones are uh, charges for services. It's showing the, an addition of $1.3 million for interfacility transports. Um, and since we don't have that contract solidified yet, I'm not comfortable including those revenues in the projected budget. And there's also a sale of fixed assets of 5.6 million, and I would prefer not to see that included either. If something were to fall through or that number weren't to be accurate, I would prefer to see that the sale of fixed assets be handled as a budget amendment and then later be brought back in. I don't want to see our spending um, dependent on making sure those sales go through. Um, so that, that said, I have some concerns with a total of about $7.4 million worth of revenue that's coming in. And I wanna make sure that our expenditures are able to uh, handle that should some of those not materialize. Uh, looking at the expenditures, there's, there's a number of expenditures that I'm questioning, but there are some that are not showing that I was hoping to see. Uh, our last council meeting, uh, the, I brought up the question as to what happened to the career ladders, and they've been broken out in a separate line, and they were not currently showing as funding. Um, that, 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 that one's a deal killer for me. Um, I want to see that one funded in any budget proposal, and I'm, I don't feel comfortable supporting a proposed budget that does not have that, because even though I th I'm, I'm very confident we'll come to an agreed upon budget in the end, but I'm not comfortable having a fallback that does not contain that. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll hold my thoughts at that, but those are the main issues. I question the revenue, and on the expenditures, I wanna make sure that we have that career ladder funded. Also, the tuition reimbursements. I, maybe it was just an oversight and I didn't see it out there, but I'd like to make sure that we have that as well. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Hager. So, yeah, I, uh, Councilmember McConaughey talk, touched on one big one, and that's a $5.6 million expenditure and budget item. And what a lot of people maybe might not be aware of, that has to do with this property that these folks came to talk to us about. So, you know, that to put that in the general fund, I agree with the council and we need to look at that. I, I've asked city manager to discuss that with me. Another thing is I was one that didn't, did not approve last year's budget because we had a deficit and it wasn't balanced. And every year at the end of the year, we get an actual accounting of what we do, we have done previous in a previous year. 
And what I found were, and these were the inaccuracies that I questioned, numbers in the $2 million that I see that is not accounted for that should be in the general fund. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm not the expert. We have experts in our staff. All I want to do is ask the questions and get them answered. But I would make a motion to not adopt the city manager's budget and postpone until after we have our workshop meeting. Do you have a motion? The motion will die for lack of a second. Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Not that I don't agree with what's been said. I'm just curious as to the process or what happens if the tentative or proposed budget is not adopted. What happens next? That's a good question. I've never had that happen again before. So I imagine it still stays the city manager's budget, and I would still have the opportunity to change it one way or the other. But that would be any changes that I wouldn't want to do without, you know, talking to the council about it at this point. Right. Okay. My concern with what the budget is, the parks funding that was discussed at the beginning of the year is not in here. And the additional police officers that were discussed at the strategic retreat planning session thing in January are also not in here. So those are two large concerns that I have. Not that I see that we have all this money laying around that we can obviously throw at these two issues, but just we have a little more creativity to go yet, I believe. Thank you. And since no one else is, I will move to approve Resolution 16-80, since it is a tentative budget put forward, and move that we adopt this tonight and move to the work session next week on the 18th. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Rolfe and a second by Council Member Rice. Discussion to the motion. Council Member Hager. Again, I'm going to oppose the motion. We need to come up with a budget. That's our job up here. We will. But we need to have our questions answered. And I hope if this passes, again, I'm going to vote to the derogatory and not vote for this motion. But if it passes, that we can come to a conclusion on finding missing monies that are accounted for in the CAFR, which is the Comprehensive Financial Report, but not accounted for in this budget, and that we reconcile the difference between this $5.6 million that's in the budget and where that money is really coming from. So those will be my objections for not approving this manager's budget. I want to give a positive about this budget, though. It's the most organized budget I've seen since I've been on the council. That's why I know what's in it. Thank you very much to our staff. Just answer questions, and I think we can get to a real budget. So I'm going to oppose this just for those two reasons. Thanks, Mayor. Council Member McConnell. Thank you, Mayor. I'll also speak in opposition, but I also wanted to, again, underscore my appreciation and gratitude. I know there's been a lot of time and a lot of effort and many, many hours that our city manager and finance staff have put into getting this far. I think it's very, very close, probably 90%, 95%. It's that last little bit that I'm concerned about, but those are kind of deal breakers for me. So that's why I'm in opposition. But I do want to say very much thank you, and I appreciate what's gone into it, and I hope my negative vote's not taken as a slight in any way. And, again, I want to thank Eric Oakland personally because I know the effort and hours he puts into it. There have been a number of times where I've been here for other committee meetings and leaving late at night, and he's just barely getting it out. And I know my first couple years on council, some of those late nights were spent giving me detailed tutorials about how the budget works. We have a very competent, very professional staff. 
it's difficult for them to read the minds of seven people on the council plus plus the city manager they do a lot of work and it's very much appreciated so I want that I hope that my negative vote will not be seen as a slight but I want you to know my appreciation thank you my final comment will be that I disagree with my colleagues I believe the revenue is much higher than the city manager proposes in several areas including property tax sales tax and some fees and specifically building permits we know what is coming and it will escalate at a higher rate than the city manager has proposed and so I believe for the first time in 12 years looking at this government we have a city manager's budget that ought to be adopted immediately there are going to be a lot of changes next week I think to it and I agree with the councilman McConaughey there's some several things I want to see changed because of the higher revenues that are than what are projected and I would just like to state that last year though I didn't vote for it a 5.4 million dollar deficit budget was approved and it's amazing we've almost made up that whole thing this year over what was projected so with that let's vote council member Jacob no council member McConaughey no council member Burton yes council member Rice yes council member Haga no council member Nichols I'm only pausing because my comment I was gonna say a comment but it's just to echo what was said but yes mayor Rob yes vote passes 43 in favor item 7b discussion of possible action regarding ordinance 16-22 amending the 2009 West Jordan Municipal Code section 13-8-23 annual cap on multifamily development applications citywide applicability city of West Jordan David yes this was discussed at an earlier meeting and Scott Langford is here to answer any questions you have this is regarding the cap and grade as it pertains to PRD and PC questions for council member Hagan so what I'm understanding is it being recommended by the Planning Commission independently to raise our percentages on our cap and grade that applies to the PRD and PC zones that gives a little bit the benefits to that is that it may have some density to it but it allows for larger lots the balance of a master plan community and I'm just gonna make a comment because I met with a few folks here in the city today and you know I live in the older part of the city and we've seen our share of high density and it wasn't till I think this council decided through a moratorium to say we want quality homes we're starting to get those homes five six hundred thousand home development by my home they're into their third phase within six months so to say we need more high density I would be opposed to that I say we stay where what we decided as our as our previous council what this council wants to decide but I'll be opposed any more percentage in raising that city thanks man council member Jacob I just a quick question for Scott again if I'm reading this right this is just codifying the suggestions that we made last time we reviewed this a couple weeks ago a month ago it's all a blur to me last time we talked about this we we up here suggested a couple of changes right and and this is just cementing those in the code correct yeah the public hearing was held on May 23rd and it was it was written up March sorry March 23rd and the the point of clarification that that 
there's only one word that's different than, than the one that you uh, saw in March, and it just clarifies that uh, master plan shall be a minimum of 75 undeveloped acres um, zone PC or PRD. So um, that, that clarification of undeveloped acres, we're not tacking on to an existing development to reach that magical 75 acre. Uh, that, that is the only difference between what you saw in March and what you have before you tonight. Thank you. Councilman McConaughey. Thank you, Matt. Uh, my concern when we saw this back in March was adding a little bit of flexibility to what's out there for the PCPRD without having additional controls from the council. Uh, since we've been able to pass those changes that make sure council has the ultimate decision-making authority, uh, I think this will help us get some of those higher end developments and be able to work a little bit better with, with the developers uh, to ensure that we get the ultimate end product that we want. So I'll, I, I will be supporting this. Thank you, Mayor. And I won't be supporting this because uh, the very concerns that 77% uh, versus 23% uh, is something that the residents have spoke loudly uh, for us to hold the line on that and because projects have been approved in the past we are much larger than that percentage now and the approved multifamily projects puts us way beyond that. Uh, I've been told like I said for at least 10 years that uh, large homes don't work in West Jordan and we only need multifamily and small homes. But amazingly enough, uh, we're finally starting to see some large home developments and they're selling out as fast as they're built. I've witnessed two in, in Council Member Burton's district in just the last year. So uh, I think we need to hold the line. So that's my opinion. Council Member Hagan. So I just need to maybe get a point of clarification clarification, are we yes or no raising the density? If I could address that. So this so is, uh, this this code amendment, the, the overall cap and grade, the overall number that the mayor just indicated will not be changing. Already in the cap and grade, there are exceptions to those numbers. Uh, senior housing, areas near transit stations, uh, affordable, um, you know, low and moderate income owned um, housing and nonprofit uh, developments, those types of things that are, are kind of protected classes. This would be adding just one more exception to incentivize, incentivize uh, PC and PRD zones. Um, the, uh, the requirements um, have to be minimum of 75 acres of, of undeveloped property and the uh, it can't be more than 17% of the total number of dwelling units in that approved master plan. And it's not just any multifamily. It has to be individually owned, townhomes or condominiums, not apartments. And so uh, hopefully this, by incentivizing developers into the PRC, PRD and PR, PC and PRD, uh, we can legally require higher amenities. We can legally require uh, exterior finishes that are above and beyond what our code currently uh, requires and so that that's kind of the the end game is to get them into these these developments where again after tonight's uh, council action the city council has final approval authority of whether or not you approve these master plans and now just to save on staff time too because i mean yeah we'll have final approval and we appreciate that that's really great. Um, but what you're telling me is if you have 75 acres and you're a PRD, you can deal with the city and get high, more high density. Is that what you're saying to me? You have the opportunity to request it. The ultimate approval, it, we're not locked into that. If it's a development plan, the staff, planning commission, and the council, ultimately the council does not like, there's no, your hands are not tied. You can, you can certainly say, no, we, we don't want you to, to 
you know, proposed 17 percent, we'd be more comfortable with the 5 percent. Uh, this gives us the greatest amount, the greatest amount of leverage and control, in especially on the west side of the city where we have those big tracts of property. One of the, the <clears throat> sorry for my voice. Um, one of the examples we looked at was a, a large development. Who uh, that the developers looked at uh, planning out the the property, and in order to get their yield, um, downsized the lots. It looked almost like a starter home community, and that's what kind of prompted our our thoughts on this. Is that if we allowed some density on the on the uh, edges towards uh, you know a buffer zone from some of the the major streets, that would allow some of the interior lots to be larger and give it uh, some of those more state lots. And that was the kind of the genesis behind this. And that's that was the thought that was uh, pervading. Our, our actions on this. So if you might recall some of those uh, layouts of, of those developments where they're cramming a whole bunch of small lots onto the uh, West Edge. Customer Hagan. I don't know if David is on online still with us. David, is there any legal... Yes. Can, I, can you hear me okay? I'm still here. David, can you hear Councilman Hager? I can. Is there any legal implication of allowing a developer of 75 acres special incentives versus somebody that has 50? No, I don't think it's arbitrary if that's your question. It's something that you've all discussed and clearly identified as a number that means significance to you. It doesn't mean that persons with something less wouldn't be willing to perhaps take us on. But I don't, I think it's certainly something because of the amount of time staff and you as a council have uh, debated and discussed this. I don't think it's something that a judge would see as being arbitrary. It's clearly an amount. Uh, that isn't, um, I've heard previous discussions to be as high as 100 acres. So our record is clear that it wasn't something that was just immediately affixed. Um, I'm comfortable with the number 75, um, and I've always invited uh, planning folks to wait on that if they don't think it's appropriate. And I haven't heard one word in the last, what, four weeks from anyone, including those developers that we reached out to in just the last two weeks to see if they had any concerns. Back to the council for discussion. Uh -oh. Can you all hear me or did I drop out? No, we can hear you, David. We can hear you good. Okay. Back, back to the council for discussion and or a motion. Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve Ordinance 16-15. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Jacob and a second by Councilmember Rice. Discussion to the motion. Councilmember Hager. Just to, to, base, to base, base my no vote on this is I think we're going to run into a situation, from my experience, with smaller developers because a 25 acre development, a 50 acre development is different than a 75 acre development. And to incentivize larger developments, you know, from being a little guy in business for a long time, I've always had a problem with that. But I'll let legal decide on that, but I'm going to oppose this based on that um, in inequality. Thank you. Councilman Nichols. Thank you, Mary. Uh, just a quick statement on this. I'm, I'm this is one of those 50 50s. It's kind of like there's a bad in both decisions here. <laughs> um, clearly, we need to change something. Um, 
I, I feel what we've done in the past uh, with the prior council with the cap and grade was a good uh, decision. It needed to be made. It gave us time to really reflect. I don't think this this uh, legislation today being proposed is the perfect answer. But one other thought I want to throw out there, and I appreciate Mr. Langford for including this in the packet. I'm assuming that was you who put it in there. Um, and that was the acreage, uh, because that's a that's just one of those outlying things that I've been thinking about specifically since our strategic planning session. And when you compare the acreage of the single family units in our city versus the multifamily units, um, including the vested multifamily units, that means 90.7%, over 90% of our land is single family units. And I think that's something that, that I, I guess maybe that's the, the, the give in me to say, you know what, I could live with that. 90% of our, our, of our property in the city, within the city limits, is the single family homes. Um, I do think it's really important that we maintain a, a strong position on this as we move forward. That I, We've seen the last few developments, which have been awesome, including one today that we approved. Um, although we, we had wanted larger lots than than a uh, quarter acre-ish. Uh, um, it, it still is much better than the small lots that we've had in the past. Um, but I still think, so this is a give and take for me. I think I'm gonna lean towards supporting this, uh, but I do know that I'm conceding that we may be giving up a little bit here, so we may need to revisit this in the very near future. Um, it, it may come right back to us. But I think this is us giving in a little bit from rather putting up a brick wall to all development. Because holding all development is not the answer either. Um, but I did think we, we, we created a, a nice little stutter in the system. Um, and I think that effect has taken place. Let's vote. Councilmember Haga? Nay. Councilmember Rice? Aye. Councilmember Connie? Aye. Councilmember Jacob? Aye. Councilmember Nichols? Yes. Mayor Ball? No. Councilmember Burton? No. The vote passes four to three in favor. I will entertain a motion to adjourn, no, to move to a closed session and adjourn from there. Mayor? I move that after a 10 minute recess, we move to a closed session to discuss character, professional confidence, or physical and mental health of an individual uh, pending or reasonably in litigation or purchase exchange or real or lease of real estate, including any form of water right or water carriers. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion to the motion. Councilmember Hager. Yeah, real quick. I don't have any opposition to the the rest period or going into closed session, but I, I would only like to be in closed session as long as we have a clear, concise audio connection with our city attorney. So as long as that's in there, I'll go in otherwise sure. I, I'll, I'll go in there it. before we start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that will be a landline connection only. Yes. Let's vote. Councilmember Jacob. Aye. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Rice? Aye. Councilmember Hagan? Yes. Councilmember Nichols? Yes. Mayor Roth? Yes. The vote passes seven in favor. We will move to closed session in 10 minutes and adjourn from there.